As one door closed in the history of the Orange Bowl, another opened as U of M head coach Jimmy Johnson and his number two ranked Miami Hurricanes squared off for a showdown against the number one ranked Oklahoma Sooners. The 1988 Orange Bowl Classic featured Game of the Year style building as the city and the country were ready for a top-notch battle. The Sooners were undefeated that season and favorites to win the game. But Johnson and his quarterback, Steve Walsh, led the team to the Sooners' only defeat of the year. The final score was 2014. Once again, the Hurricanes win the national title under the watchful lights of the Orange Bowl in their first perfect 12-0 season. The Orange Bowl had once again proven its magic qualities for the hometown crowd, when in the following year, Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes won the Orange Bowl Classic game for the second year in a row. I know when I first started coaching in the Orange Bowl, uh, just the enthusiasm of the crowd, you know, the, you know, the stands were right on top of the field and we had you know, an enthusiastic student body and the student section really got crazy and, and so yeah, it was uh, very exciting to be there for the first time. Uh, the, the sound in this Orange Bowl, it seems to be so magnified, I think in part because of the design and the fact that we're right on top of the field here. It's an old-fashioned stadium. It was built way back in 1938 by a federal agency, and they built it close to the field, and they built it as quickly and as humbly as they possibly could, and that's what we have here. We have a very compact, tight stadium that is within a very compact neighborhood. I remember parking my car and approaching the stadium for big games. And I remember it vividly. And it, it was a crucible uh, uh, where, where it was a unification of South Florida. And Cubans fresh to our country would be there. And they'd be screaming, Chula, Chula, Chula. And Zonka, Zonka, Zonka. And I mean, before you even got into the building, you were amped up. And so my memory would be that at no time in Miami's history um, have I felt a oneness in our community like I felt in the Orange Bowl. In, in the Orange Bowl, it was a family. I mean, you, you saw everybody and you knew. I mean, I'd see people on the street they would talk to me because they saw me in, in, in the stands. Because they saw me walking to my seat, they thought they knew me. It was like a, um, it was a family. I always laugh and say, uh, doesn't everybody park in someone's yard when they go to the football games? Uh, I do remember that my entire life. Uh, I remember my father wouldn't let us do it, and we, the kids in the family used to get mad at him because he wouldn't let us park in our yard. But, but that was always so friendly. and. For many years, with, with having tickets uh, to the University of Miami game, we'd park in the same yard. And we knew everybody, and they knew us, and they called you by name. And, and uh, so, I don't know, that's part of the mythology or part of the lore, I think, of Orange Bowl lore. The Orange Bowl became many things to many people when it broadened its appeal by becoming an important place for the world of soccer. When the Miami Toros brought soccer to South Florida, New communities found a home in the Grand Stadium. There they could indulge their passions for the other sport of football. Official soccer tournaments, World Cup qualifiers, and Olympic games continually brought the best clubs, teams, and fans from the world over. Great soccer stars have stepped out of the Orange Bowl's tunnel onto the pitch with Miami's vast international community always there to greet the stars and their favorite sport. Uh, the Orange Bowl was also the, the site for a lot of important movies. Uh, Black Sunday, about a terrorist attack or threat uh, on a gathered throng here in the Orange Bowl, as well as any given Sunday with Al Pacino. And in fact, for the latter, uh, the, uh, the film cars and trailers were lined up here for many months. The shoot took place over a period of several months. And again, it's a great venue for that. You're going to do something with a sports stadium, why not the Orange Bowl? In the 1990s, the spotlight from the historical nature of the games played in the Miami Stadium now brought the eyes of corporate sponsorship. The Orange Bowl Classic now wore the name of the FedEx Orange Bowl. We were able to, uh, to capture the FedEx as a major sponsor. Uh, they came on board uh, uh, at, at the 87-88 uh, time. 
And they were a quality organization with Fred Smith, their CEO, and uh, they helped enormously, not just their financial income, but it was a testimony for others in the community to step up and be part of a new organization and a new rebuilding of the Orange Bowl. The new decade boded well for the stadium as the Orange Bowl continued to host the nation's top college teams within its hollowed stands. The Orange Bowl committee had been successful in uh, hosting national championship games. In fact, we hold the record, 18. After this uh, uh, bowl coalition series, we'll have 19 because the championship's going to be here in Miami. And the reason for that is that back in, the, in, in, in those early days, uh, every bowl had an agreement with a conference, and our, our conference was a big eight. And every year, either Oklahoma or Nebraska was one or two. So we were always inviting uh, either the number one or two team to come and play uh, our host team. And it guaranteed us a championship. Well, I, I think when you look at any stadium, um, there's going to be special memories if there's great victories there. Um, you look at a, an outstanding stadium with great facilities, if they don't win games there, it's not going to be special. And so I think the thing that makes the Orange Bowl special was there were so many great victories there by both the Dolphins and the University of Miami. In 1992, another epic Miami versus Nebraska game took place within the Orange Bowl. And once again, the national championship was the prize. Coach Dennis Erickson and his Hurricanes shut out Nebraska's Big Red Machine with a 22-0 defeat. In the fall of 1994, the Orange Bowl committee voted to move the game to Joe Robbie Stadium as a condition of remaining in a new bowl alliance. The 1999 FedEx Orange Bowl was the last time the game was played in the former Roddy Burdine Stadium, a tradition that had lasted through 60 years of Miami history ended with that game. Part of the uh, BCS uh, decision-making uh, criteria was um, the stadium that the game would be played in and uh, we really had no choice if we were going to be a BCS bowl game uh, they stipulated that it had to be in the, in, uh, the Robbie Stadium, Dolphin Stadium and uh, that was the, what led us to make that, uh, that move. Uh, we had no alternative. The years that followed saw the University of Miami's football team rise once more to greatness by winning the 2001 National Championship title. It was a pinnacle team in a mountainous time, said one reporter. Many say it was the best team ever to come from the university. Soon after, the university announced that 2007 was the last year that UM football would be played at the Orange Bowl, and that Joe Robbie Stadium, also known as Dolphin Stadium, would now be the new home for the Hurricanes. As the Hurricanes move north to the modern confines of Dolphin Stadium, will the magic of the Orange Bowl go with them? Or will it be lost forever to the past? If we had to measure the value that the Orange Bowl Stadium had on South Florida, would it be possible? Could we measure the millions it touched nationally and internationally in 70 years and five generations? Could we measure the joy, the elation, and even the sorrow felt within its walls and beyond? Could we remember all the memories of glory, honor, legend, determination, history, and community to something that gave so much to us and asked for nothing in return? It may be impossible, but we can try. We can try to remember that there was once a place that we called home, a home where memories were made and the love of a community grew. Let us never forget that for so long it brought us together, and in that memory may it keep us together for the generations to come. One of the things I cherish most about Miami, and I've been here well over a half a century of my life, is the Orange Bowl. And I always felt like 
this thing would always be around. I, I could never imagine a Miami without an Orange Bowl, and now we've come to a time uh, when it's ready to be raised, and uh, I'm pretty heartsick about the whole thing. Uh, I think the only comfort I take is uh, lots of friends of mine, both younger and older, the same age, feel the same way. We feel like we've really shared something special, and even though it's not going to be here anymore, we'll always have very strong memories of it. Now the Nittany Lions of Penn State, favored in this ball game, are behind 14-7. The Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the Clemson Tigers in a fight for the national title in college football. Burkhart to Campbell for 48 yards, and the first down on the green. You look back when the first stadium was built, it cost $325,000 to start the Orange Bowl back in 38. To build something like that today has cost $325 million. So you're looking at a whole different program. And uh, it's probably uh, good because the Orange Bowl was getting kind of dilapidated, old, things were falling apart, and major work had to be done. The University of Miami and the preservation people worked very, very hard to get the bond issue passed in the last bond election for restoration of the Orange Bowl, but it just wasn't enough money. Morrill on the snap, drops straight back to throw. He sets up, he is firing down in the corner, Warfield, touchdown! Off the handoff to kick over the left side, he digs and drives and bucks his way into the end zone for a touchdown. He was picking Zonka, put back behind him, spins, hands to Zonka, he threw, touchdown! Off. You know, you got progress everywhere, and so I think it was good for University of Miami to, to move up to Dolphin Stadium. I, I think the facilities will be so much nicer. Uh, without question, there's always going to be nostalgia for the Orange Bowl uh, and great memories, but I don't think we'll ever lose that. The Orange Bowl, thank God, had more memories in it than anything I've ever been associated with. The pass is knocked away, picked off by Jake Scott on the 45, the 40, 35 to the near side, 30, down to the 25. We don't have many historical edifices down here, uh, but in Dade County, you could point to the Orange Bowl and say, that's our building. And so many great things, not just sporting things, happened in that Orange Bowl. Uh, I think it's a travesty that that building is lost to us, and it will never be replaced. Reefy drops the throw. He sets up, he is firing in the corner. The Orange Bowl Stadium was like a piece of home. I mean, it's a place that I, I enjoyed going to. Uh, it's a place that uh, I uh, sat in an area with all my friends. It's a place that we uh, had a little snack out in the parking lot before we went in. Uh, it was an event. It was a destination point that I looked forward to. And when the season was over, I couldn't wait for it to start again because uh, uh, it was really a great experience to be there. When the Orange Bowl is disassembled, it's going to be a special place in my heart for it because I had so many great moments in the Orange Bowl, not only just playing there, but going there as a kid. It's, it's always been there. I've always known the Orange Bowl all of my life. People like me that have been here all their life, we miss it. We, we used to, everything that revolved around the Orange Bowl. Christmas and New Year's and throughout those days were, were just more Orange Bowl events. And it's really sad that uh, we couldn't have done something, but uh, economically, I, I, the times have changed. Yeah. Esther to the 10, to the 15, has all 20, 25, 30. Here we go. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. One man to beat. He's at the 30. Gets back at the 20. He's at the 10. The 5. Devin Esther goes. The Orange Bowl has always had a uh, just a sentimental spot for me, and uh, a lot of great, great memories. And uh, think about the the fan involvement at the Orange Bowl, the crowd excitement, and uh, uh, that's never going to be replaced in any other stadium around the country. There's never going to be that feeling of of crowd noise and crowd fan support that we had at the Orange Bowl.
Orange Bowl Stadium is now just a pile of rubble and dust, but in my heart, it's gonna live there forever.